Welcome to the Vallejo Drive Church, and I hope you've all had a happy new year. I know one thing for sure, there's been an awful lot of us that have been very ill for the last week or two, and some of them, of them aren't back yet. Uh, today's kind of like my first day back. My wife and I have been down since Christmas with a serious uh, chest cold, but uh, we're delighted to be here. Please take a note of the announcements in the bulletin. I do want to thank all of you for your generosity in giving. The year-end giving was just great. We were able to pay our bills and to be able to start uh, next year with a good amount in reserve to help us to fall back on in the, the lean months ahead until we always seem to catch up somehow in the month of December. But thank you for your giving and your faithfulness. Today marks uh, the inaugural service of our first Sabbath. First Sabbath will be the first Sabbath of each month. We are making that Sabbath a very special day of emphasis on families, youth, young adults, and children ministries. Today the service will be a little bit different than you've been used to, but it gives us a great opportunity of integrating our whole family together. I just love to, to look in the faces of those young people as they were worshiping and the joy that was coming out as they were sharing 
uh, the music with us. So each first Sabbath from now on will be special. Choir happens to be off today. It's a scheduled time off. They'll be with us in the future. But our services on the first of the month will have this very special family emphasis. And I want you to uh, experience the joys of ministry that our young people are sharing with us each month. We're very happy that uh, you can all be part of that. And thank you for your gifts of ministry to us. I'd like to invite uh, the Wong fam family up right now. Myra, Myra and uh, um, Kingsley bringing their two children. We've already dedicated. The first one today is a baby dedication for Logan, the newest one. Oh, look at that big smile. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Well, the Bible tells us that children are a gift from God. In paraphrasing uh, Psalm 127, it says, Children are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward from Him. Now, God is the Creator. He gave us all life. And He gave us the privilege of being recreators also. So as we parent, we become participants in learning what love is by giving new life. And today we celebrate that new life of Logan. Children belong to God, and it is certainly right that we bring them in dedication to Him at the beginning of their lives. In First Samuel, we were given the, the um, story of Hannah who presented her son Samuel to the Lord. It was a model used in the Old Testament. Jesus also fulfilled that model when his parents brought him into the temple for dedication. And so today, Kingsley and Myra are bringing baby Logan to present him before the Lord in our church community. In Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, we're giving counsel as parents. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today to be on your hearts, impress them on the hearts of your children. So God wants us to pass on not only love, but the knowledge of him to our kids in order that they might know who he is. And in Ephesians 6, we are reminded that to bring up our children in the training and instruction of the Lord. So recognizing that, the two of you come today to dedicate Logan. So I'm going to ask uh, a couple questions of you. I know in every ounce of your fiber, you love God and you love your child and you want him to know Jesus. So Kingsley and Myra, by coming forward before God and his people, do you declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your son Logan to the Lord? By coming today, do you declare that you are asking for God's help in partnership with the church to provide Logan a Christian home of love and peace, to raise him in the truth of the Lord's instruction and discipline, and to encourage him to one day trust Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And for us as a church, we want you to know that we stand with you and that we will not only support you, but we'll be part of that training as well. There's an old proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. And we are a church community, and this community today will dedicate ourselves to join you in educating, guiding, and directing Logan throughout his life. Let's bow our heads as we have a prayer of dedication. Our Father in heaven, we come before you today with this precious child, Logan. We pray that you will bless Logan and guide him all the days of his life. May Kingsley and Myra be blessed with wisdom, knowledge, patience, and kindness to guide Logan through all his life. We pray that the name of Jesus would be so real to him that he would know him as his best friend. Thank you for your watch care over this precious little one. Grant Logan health and strength throughout his life. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I have special things for you that we'll give you after church. Okay. Life, okay. God bless.
Please stand and join us in singing, Here I Am to Worship. to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughter shall be carried on their nurse's arms.
You may be seated. I'd like to invite you to assume whatever position you wish as we we seek the Lord in prayer today. We want to invite those who wish to come down to come on down to uh, stand together as we pray. And those who wish to kneel, we invite you to kneel as well. At the end of this prayer today, we're going to close this prayer with the Lord's Prayer. And at that time, I'd like to invite all of us to reach around and join hands with someone next to you as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we, we come into your presence today. We stand, we kneel, we bow before you, the great God of the universe. We magnify you, O oh God, we lift you up because you are a great God. You're clothed in majesty and all your works are righteousness. Your glory is beyond our comprehension, your goodness beyond our understanding. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we just come into your presence declaring with humility and thanksgiving that you are our God. We praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you, we lift your name on high because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? And so we pour our hearts out to you today, O oh God, thanking you from the bottom of our hearts for bringing us to this new year, just so we can praise you, just so we can lift your name on high. Lord, we ask that you would forgive us our sin, that you would, you would cleanse us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, that you would you would put a new spirit in our, in our lives and you would give us that new heart that you've promised. May we love one another with the love of Jesus. May we accept, may we embrace, may we forgive. Lord, I pray that we will enter this new year with a victory that comes from knowing you. And oh God, I just thank you for this great community of faith that bows before you. Today I pray, O oh God, in a mighty way that you will move especially near and dear to each one. Those who are broken, may you be a healer. Those who are sick, I pray that you would restore. Those who are messed up, I pray that you would bring deliverance. Those who are in chains, those who are bound, those who are trapped, I pray, oh God, that you would open prison doors and set them free in Jesus' name. This entire community of faith, we love you, oh God. We thank you for bringing us together and establishing us here in this territory, in this community of Glendale. May we be a light for you in this new year. And this day, oh God, I pray as we participate with our young people in this wonderful worship service, I pray, oh God, especially for this man that you've chosen to preach your word today. Oh God, I pray that you would, you, would, you, would, you would free him, set him free from, from any attack from the enemy. Pastor Shane, I pray, oh Lord, that you would pin his ear to the wisdom post. Let him down in the well post of, wellspring of your salvation. Cause him to hear and see your word and deliver it with power to your people. And Lord, we just thank you that the preached word will not return void. And so we pray that this word today may dwell in our hearts and transform our lives so we can live for you with power in this new year. And now, O oh God, as you have taught us to pray, we pray as we connect with our neighbor next to us, we pray our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen amen god bless you this time I'd like to invite all the children to come forward all the adults can give each other the hand of friendship while we're waiting for the kids to come up Well, good morning, boys and girls. How is everybody? How is everybody today? I see lots of shiny smiles. There's... All right. Well, I want to ask you a question today. Who can tell me what this is? It's a card, yes. You're right, it is a library card. How many of you have a library card? Kids can get library cards too. Wow. Do you think kids can get library cards? Yeah, they can. Who do you think besides kids get library cards? Grown-ups, yes. Does it matter how tall you are? Does it matter if you have brown eyes or blue eyes? No? Wow. Well, well, who can't get a card? There is no one, right? I see this beautiful girl. Dogs can't have library cards. You're very right. Dogs, you know, they would just eat it. But let's think about people. Of people who cannot get a library card. Jesus. You're, these kids are smarter than me. A baby. Well, baby, mommy could get the baby a card. I gave my daughter a library card when she was about two years old. You know, there's nobody that cannot get a library card. You can get a library card if you're little or big or fat or tall or maybe you have brown hair or blonde hair. Well, you can even go into the library with your library card and you can check out books, of course, for free, right? The library card is free to everyone. Or you can get music, movies, all kinds of things. You can even use their computers that they have there. Wow. Well, I want to ask you a question. If anybody can get a library card, and it's totally, totally free, let's talk about the family of God. Who can get into the family of God? Everyone. Everyone. Jane said that. Everyone can get into the family of God. Not Satan. Well, maybe not. See, I told you, that's my grandson. He's smarter than me. 
Well, everybody could be in the family of God. And I want to know if it matters if you're a boy or a girl. Does it matter? No. Everybody can get into the family of God. If you're 100 or you're just a baby, everybody can be in the family of God. Now, I want to know, what does it cost to be in the family of God? What do you have to pay for it? Nothing. Nothing. It's free, just like the library card. Totally free. In fact, it's even more free. Because if you lose your library card, you have to pay to get a new one. But if you lose your way in the family of God, it's totally free to come back to him. As long as you ask him. He's not going to come unless you ask him. Say, I want you to be here, God. So let's all say that. I want to be in the family of God. Can you be any louder than that? I want to be in the family of God. And you can for totally free. Now, there is no children's church today, so you need to return to your mom or dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever brought you. Thanks for listening. Please stand and join us in singing our next song, Come Thou Found. grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation in former generations this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that is the Gentiles have become fellow heirs members of the same body and sharers in the promised in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let
today goes towards the church budget to all the things that you see and experience here all the programs that we have so please give liberally please bow your heads Lord thank you for another opportunity to give back Lord as we come to you today just help us to give with willing hearts and help us to Spread the ministry to the community around us and also in this church. All these things I ask in your name. Amen.
This morning's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born of the king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year. And just uh, thank you for uh, especially all of our musicians today, the Taylor family, uh, the Praxis Band, and uh, Ray Egan, who's our guest organist and pianist today, just wonderful. So let's just, let's just thank them one more time. Um, this is, as we mentioned at the beginning, a new tradition uh, at Vallejo Drive. Uh, this first Sabbath will be a, a family Sabbath, so many years years and years from now, you'll be able to look back and say that you were here for our, our very first uh, family Sabbath. So again, in addition to thanking the musicians, I just want to thank everyone else uh, who really made this possible. Um, you know, when I first came to this church uh, almost six years ago now, it's been a long time for those of you who have, uh, have been here as well, uh, the tradition was originally that at 11 a.m., the young adults would be in the cafe. Uh, and Pastor Mike would go and give a kind of abbreviated version of his sermon there and leave us with some discussion questions, and then he would come and preach uh, to the rest of you here. Before that, uh, before I was here, I believe they used to live stream this service in the cafe for the young people. And in both of those cases, the message that's being communicated is, we don't expect you to be here. Uh, we will accommodate you to be more comfortable somewhere else. Uh, so we've come a long ways, and this, you know, today marks, I think, a, a, an important step uh, forward for this church. So I wish that the pastors uh, could take some of the credit for this, but really this has been uh, your doing. Uh, we've heard so many of you uh, asking for something like this, pushing for something like this. So I'm just, I'm proud of those and grateful for those of you who have, have made this happen uh, through your vision, your efforts, and your compromises. You know, this, uh, this took a lot to make this happen. So, today, by a, a rich providential coincidence, our gospel reading, I think, fits really well with our theme of, of one family. Because this story of the Magi that we know uh, brings an end to our Christmas season, um, but it's all about unity in worship. Let me show you what I mean by that. The Bible says, In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Interestingly, we usually refer to the story as the story of the three kings uh, when the Bible claims neither that there are three of them nor that they are kings. Uh, the word that Matthew uses here is a magi, magi, which can mean uh, wizard, <laughs> sorcerer. Uh, you can hear in the word magi our English word magic, right? The magi are religious figures, but they're not of the Hebrew faith. Likely from Persia, these uh, sorcerers were Gentiles, pagans. Uh, they were priests 
of a false religion, astrologers. These are the same kind of people that in Leviticus, the Bible says, do not turn to mediums or wizards, do not seek them out to be defiled by them. But here Israel does not seek them, they seek Israel, asking, where is your newborn king? And what makes them aware of Christ's arrival, but they say, we have seen his star. And we can't miss the significance of this. Here, a group of pagan priests, outsiders to the faith of Israel, they don't know the scriptures, but God uses what they do know to communicate to them. This is a perfect example of what we mean when we say that God meets people where they're at. God communicates with us in a way that we will understand. He speaks in the language of our culture. Now, we have a tendency, especially in Adventism, to get uh, really paranoid about things of pagan origin. You know what I'm talking about, right? People say, oh, that comes from this or that comes from that. Uh, especially, you know, when it comes to music. I remember reading books in, in uh, high school being told that uh, any use of drums in worship is like African witchcraft or something like that, right? So we have this tendency to say, oh, that's not, that's not what God uses. That's something other. That's, that's pagan. That's Gentile. But the point of all of these, I think, kind of conspiracy theories is that we're trying to box God in. We're trying to figure God out so that we can say, God speaks to us in this way. God prefers this kind of music. God only speaks to us in a way that I want him to speak. But what our gospel is telling us this morning is that God speaks to us in the most surprising ways. In fact, the Bible shows us time and time again that God prefers to speak in ways that we don't think he can speak. The mediums or the avenues that we say God hates, that's what God will use. These magi, they were looking to the stars to try to find God. So God uses the stars to speak to them. And I can't help but think of Acts chapter 17, this one of the most beautiful passages in the New Testament, where Paul is visiting Athens. And he sees in Athens all of their uh, pagan religion. He sees their statues, their altars, their rituals. And what you might expect is for Paul to condemn their idolatry and their wickedness. But instead, he stands up to speak to them and he gives them words of affirmation. He says, people of Athens, I see that you are most religious in every way. And rather than introducing Jesus Christ as a rival to their religion, he incorporates himself and his message into the worldview that they already have. And he says, I notice that you have an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. And this was consistently Paul's method of evangelization. He met people where they were at. He didn't compromise his message, but we have to be careful to distinguish between the message and the medium in which that message is communicated. We have to distinguish between what is being said and how it's being said. Because Paul, the master evangelist, he adapts his presentation, he adapts his style to a new audience in order that the gospel might have a further reach. He says to the Corinthians, to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might win the Jews. To those who are without the law, I became as one who was without the law, that I might win them. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. Paul, as the apostle to the Gentiles, understood this better than anyone else. Because what was revolutionary about Paul's message was that the Gentiles, these non-Jewish people, could become members of the church without having to become Jewish. And that's the most important part of the whole thing. That's what made Paul so radical. Gentiles being welcomed in that wasn't new. That had been happening for centuries. But in order for the Gentiles to come in, they would say, sure, you can be one of us, as long as you dress like us, as long as you cut your hair like us, as long as you talk like us, as long as you worship like us. 
And what Paul is saying is that we can accept each other despite our differences. The great news of the gospel that we heard in today's reading from Ephesians is that the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. We've all become members of one family, not because we're the same, and not because we all do the same thing, but precisely in our differences, we are united as one family. Now compare that, if you will, to the antagonist in our story, King Herod. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born, they told him, in Bethlehem. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time that the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. Herod, in this story, serves as a an amazing contrast to the wise men because here are these foreigners, uh, honest, sincere, almost naive, we might say, in their interactions, but Herod is cold and calculating. And he gives the appearance that he wants to worship the Messiah as well, but it's all a pretense. It's all for show. He doesn't really want to worship the newborn king. He wants to destroy him. And why? Because the wise men came and said, where is the one who's to be born king of the Jews? Well, see, king of the Jews, that's Herod's title. Herod is king of the Jews. The Roman Senate had appointed Herod as king of the Jews. So for someone to be born king of the Jews meant his power is being taken away. The next king of the Jews should be his own son, who will be a member of his family and carry on his name. So the message that comes from the wise men is a direct threat to him and to his power and his control and his family. So what a contrast between these wise men and their story. They represent Jews and Gentiles coming together as one family centered around true worship, diverse, authentic, and on the other hand, we have Herod, who rather than wanting uh, to, to be part of this new and inclusive family, he works only to protect his own interests and maintain his control. So I think we have to decide this morning which of these characters we will be. Those who welcome the outsiders, those who are prepared to hear God speak in new and unexpected ways, or those who seek only to be in control and to have their power protected. The story continues, as you know, that the king sends them to Bethlehem, and they see the star as they had seen at its rising, and it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they knelt down and paid him homage, And opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return, they left for their own country by another road. This scene of the wise men and the young family of Jesus under one roof is a kind of symbol of the church. Because here in Bethlehem we find women and men, young and old, people from all different parts of the world with different cultural heritages, different customs and practices, but they were all gathered together there in that place for one purpose, to worship Jesus. And isn't that exactly what we do here this morning? Women and men, young and old, people from all different parts of the world with all different cultural heritages, different customs and practices, but we all come together for the same purpose, to worship Jesus, to give him our gifts. We each come to give our best, to offer our talents, whatever those might be, 
to give back to God what he has given to us. And I love how this story ends because it says that the wise men returned to their own country. You see, the purpose of the church is not to come here and to stay here, but we're meant to go back. Go back to our homes, go back to our work, go back to our schools. Having been transformed by this encounter with Jesus, we go out to share that love with others. And having been brought together as one family, we go out to invite others to come and share in this fellowship with us. Amen? That's my prayer for you this week. Uh, And if that is yours as well, I invite you to stand with me as we sing our closing hymn, hymn number 350, uh, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. submit ourselves to you as our King and Messiah. We, along with all the nations of the world, are drawn to the warmth of your light. As we gather together in your presence, kindle our hearts with the fire of your love that we may go from this place carrying the good news of your salvation. For in you we have been adopted as sons and daughters of God, united by the Spirit into one family. So as one body and one temple, we give all glory to you, eternal God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.